All right. Good morning again and welcome to today's session. This is Distance Education Students Group 3 for 2024 January. Um, but the content, of course, serves different groupings if you want to, just in case you come across it, it will serve you well. My name is Dr. Nancy Miles, that for GMP. You call me Dr. Miles, I'm fine with it. A senior lecturer of the Department of Philosophy and Classics, which hosts the University of Ghana required course, UGRC 150 Critical Thinking Practical Reason. We are going to engage our unit two discussion today. If there is enough time, we'll delve into parts of unit. I think portions of unit three are incorporated into my slides on equivocation and others. Do you have any questions? Let me ask for the last time in case there's a question. I see hands of those who want to read that. Do you have a question that is bothering you? Let's address it. If not, then we go straight to content. So on your screen, the topic we are engaging is definitions. And if there is time, we can start unit three on verbal disputes versus substantive disagreements and what have you. Why definitions? Because we want you to know how to communicate. Let me just go to that slide that says that. Look on your screen, please. We want you to be minded that effective marketing of the knowledge you acquire in your field of study depends on how well you define that content to suit your target audience at any point in time. Is how well you define that content to suit your target get audio. That is what makes for effective marketing of that knowledge. So definitions are not just, it's not just an linguistic thing that we are going to do. We want you to know how to sell what you say you have learned in school, solve problems. Uh, and so that is why definitions is a high marker on our content that we deliver. As critical, I think this topic two. After we do language, the next thing we do is give to work on what giving meaning. So what are the parts of a definition from last week's discussion? What are the parts of a definition? Very quickly. Definiendum and definition. Excellent. So it's definiendum and definition. Those are the parts of a definition. And, and so today, we want to build on that quickly by looking at aspects of a definition. When well, we have a definiendum and a definition describing the parts of a definition, a definiendum is the unknown word. So when I say a bachelor is an unmarried adult male, what is the definiendum? All of us. A bachelor. All of us. But, okay. The word I don't know is a bachelor. The definiendum. So I'm saying if you don't know bachelor, look at an unmarried adult male. The presupposition is that you know unmarried adult male, but you don't know bachelor. So I say what you don't know, which is bachelor. I'm using what you know, a married adult to help you know much. That's the logic of what defining, making meaning. So you always want to move from what the person knows to help him know what he doesn't know. Oh, COVID, COVID is like Qatar. But so that the person's mind quickly goes to Qatar and not uh, Coco or uh, for Boyle. But when you say, oh, it's like Qatar, immediately you see that attention goes to Qatar. And Qatar is more familiar. Then you can add whatever else is left to help the person out with COVID. Okay. What is ATM? Oh, is that machine? Then the person's mind will immediately go to machine. Machine, there is no fruit. See? So it's a machine that you stand in front of and then key in some figures and then it will save you whatever. If it's money, if it is drink, if it is uh, whatever you want coins, it can give you what I say, automated teller machine. It's a teller. A machine that acts like so, so you are using what is known to help the person know what he does. You need this to understand too broad, too narrow, circular, and big when we get there shortly. Okay. So, those are parts of a definition. But we also want you to know that a definition has aspects, okay? It can connote and denote. So, when I have a definition sitting there, it has a connotation. And that same definition has what? A denotation. What is the connotation of the word? A, a, a definition. It's just what the definition stands for, what it means. Okay. 
A chair is a furniture we sit on. That definition I've just given you only captures one of the connotations of the word chair, but one of the meanings of the word chair. A chair, look on my screen, please. A chair is the head of an institution. That is no, please, I don't meaning. see your screen. Oh, is that so? I'm so sorry. Can anyone see my screen, please? I'm no, not it. no, 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 so when I define a word, it has a connotation. And the connotation, that big word connotation just means what it means. So I just moved to the third one here. And I said, look at my screen now. A chair is a furniture we sit on. That is one of what the connotations of the word chair. Can I have one of you read the second connotation of a chair you have there? So um, about we have a chair. I have to go to that slide. Say, 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 just read it. The, the gentleman just spoke. So that we don't. Anna. Okay. Manuel, I see Manuela, I see Yvonne, I see Halima too now. Manuela, can you read, please? Go ahead. Read the second connotation of the word chair for me. Now I see Van John. So Manuela, read. Chair is the head of an institution. Uh -huh. So now, if you look at that, chair is the head of an institution. You see that as soon as I define chair as the head of an institution, which is another connotation of the word chair, another meaning that we give to the word chair, immediately what it refers to, the particular examples that the second definition of a chair refers to will not be the same as the first examples connotation of the word chair. Can you see that? The first example refers to what exactly, uh, the first um, Connotation of the word chair refers to which examples of chair? Uh, on mute and talk, like the physical chair, right? I'm yes. sitting on a chair. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. So the black chair, madam is sitting on. The white chair, the pastor is sitting on. The, the Nanado's chair at his presidency, uh, what have you. These will be physical, wooden or plastic or metallic chairs. Uh, Square shaped or rectangular shaped substance that we sit on with our back. Sometimes it has a back to rest on, sometimes it doesn't. That one is what the speaker meant in the first instance. Everyone look on the screen where he said the chair is the furniture we sit on. But if I if I had said chair and I meant the meaning, the connotation is the head of an institution, the second one, look. Then you see that immediately what it denotes. So denotation is the example, the particular example will change from material substance, eh, wooden chair, to what human beings. You see that the chair of EC, the chair of the a woman, the chair of the Council of State, the chair of the church of so and so, chair, chair, chair to now to be human beings. So what are we trying to show you? When the connotation of a word changes, that is simply meaning what when the meaning of the word changes, its denotation would also change. Uh, the particular examples the word meaning points to will also change. Any questions with that? Any questions with that, please? All hands are down now. So if you raise your hand to ask a question, I can pick you up quickly and address your question for you. If not, then we can move on. So, so far, you know the types of a, excuse me, the parts of a definition, the aspects of a definition. Richie, what's your question? It is a question. Is it Hulavia or Hulavia? Mensa, please ask your question, if it's a question, or if you wanted to read, then it's fine. I think Van wanted to read. Okay, so there are no questions. So we know parts of a definition. We just went through the aspects of a definition. Some more examples to make the point. Look on the screen. So 
Let's have Van read this for me now. Van, read what is on your screen. You won't be on standby. The legislature agreed to table the notion for another day. Should I continue? Mm -hmm. the, ro the, ro the rows and columns in the table are too complex. Are mm. too complex. Your breakfast is already on the table. Very good. Notice, notice, read the notice, sir. Read that one. <laughs> notice the different connotations of the word table. Okay, so now let's look at it together. Look at the first use of the word table. What, what does it say? Which meaning of the word table are we using there? I want an interactive class. So I'm asking the class now, please. Hey, Ram, Seshi, go ahead. Very good, schedule. Bring it up for another day, etc., etc. So what that first use of the word table, there is not the furniture I put food on. That's all I'm showing you. What the meaning of table connotes there is not the same as what the, the connotation of table is in the last sense. Uh, the last sense is the one we are all very familiar with and we like a lot <laughs> to survive, okay? The food is on the table. That table there means, you know, we'll put food on. The rows and columns may be discussing Excel sheets or arrangements of uh, whatever in a complex way. If you got that, then we are ready to introduce you to equivocation, which is an error committed when people use the different meanings of one word the different connotations of one word. This same argument contest and make it look as if they haven't shifted from one meaning to the other, from the way they argue. They are using more than one of the meanings. The word is one, but it has several meanings. They have shifted from one of its meanings to the other in that same contest of argumentation. See that? But they make it look as if, no, 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 it has always been that one meaning we're using throughout. That is equivocation. Let's look at examples. So for instance, if I say, Abu is madly in love with Ya. Abu is madly in love with Ya. And mad people must be put to anchor for. Abu is madly in love with Ya. Mad people must be put into anchor for or a, pre, a, a hospital. Therefore, Abu must be put to hospital. Now, that is equivocation. Can you see why that is equivocation? Abu is mad in love with, yeah. Mad people must be put to, into hospital to be taken care of or something. Therefore, Abu must be put into hospital. Charity, you want to show us why that is equivocal? So we move on. Okay. Or someone else wants to try. If you want to respond, please raise your hand. Because maybe others raise their hands to read. Valentine. Hey, Valentine, your day is coming on. How's it saying? <laughs> Val, Val. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, it's equivocation because um, Abu is madly in love with you. Doesn't necessarily mean Abu is mad. It's the madly that is just a figurative word. We describe the degree at which he's in love. Excellent. Ah, what been Papa? So, I finish. I had anything. Your friend just told you. Your friend just told you. The the way in which we are using the word mad. One of the uses of the word mad just means extremely in love. Extreme. Or don't know the type of You know that kind of thing. So much doesn't mean the person is sick in the head that we need coding to drink to let it go. The second use of the word man however, means the person is sick in the head. It has to be restricted and taken care of. Yet the conclusion says, so how Abu feels towards the 
Madly in love, Linji, he should be put into hospital. Then you mix up the meanings like that. And so make it look as if you were always, or you had always been referring to the, just one of the meanings throughout. We call it out that they were being equivocal. Very straightforward to the point, Valentine. Thank you. So we can now read what is on our screen. Yvonne, read for me. Afterwards, Manuel, I wrote the names down. Unless you want to read again, then put up your hand. Go ahead. Uh, and take Yvonne. Who is reading? Very quickly, I don't want the recording to be too long. Yet. Okay. Please come hear my voice. I can hear you clearly. Go ahead. Okay. Detecting equivocation. If more than one connotation of a word is used in the same context without any signal of the shift, with the intention to manipulate or to persuade the speaker accused of committing of equivocation. Very good. Now, that is what we have explained. So, Adam, please read the example there, which the I example. often believe. Yes, go ahead. Okay. I do I don't see why women are always complaining that they do not enjoy the same freedom as men do. It is a free it is a free country. So what's the problem? Everybody in Ghana here is free to do what they like. Share. And I know you read it today. As I did one or can you it's like <laughs> Very good. Now let's go and interrogate you together as critical minds. Now working on our critical thinking skill. The person is that what I detect, and we all can see in the matter of minutes. I'm sure most of you already see is the person is equivocating on the use of the word free. The sense in which, so there we go, the word is one, but what it means can move from, remember the chair example. Or the table exam, very simple words, but you see how many meanings they can have. A sister can be my biological sibling, my mother's daughter. But a sister can also be a, be a Roman Catholic sister. Father can be my biological father, but can also be a Catholic priest. A family can be nuclear, extended, or intro and in tone that we join. So you have to temic. Uh, animals and water. Some say, Mimi, or Yoko, me, P. Hama, excuse me, I'm a no Yoko, or I'm a Akona. And it's another sense of the word family. Some will say, He is a son of the land. They are talking about Yana. Son means father, mother, mother, sister, family. See that. But you don't know Kubiana in your family. Your family, you see another use of the word family. So I want you to understand as a critical man, if you don't do so many examples, forget it. And the fact that you heard the word be repeated or someone is using that word doesn't mean it connotes the same thing all the time. And as a critical mind, you must see through it. People are born free. We have to protect the freedoms that people have. These are two different connotations of the word free. But people mix them all up and make arguments everywhere. Policy makers sometimes, international relations, you know, church doctrine. Christ has made us free. We are free indeed. We don't pay tax. No offering. They will send everything. Grace has come. Yeah. If you if you equivocate, you hurt yourself more. And if you allow people to play on you with equivocation, you see it again in a ten. You will hurt yourself because words connote different things. I thought this. If if you uh, say the wages of sin is death, and you are not. We are not dead. We are. We, I'm not dead. We are sinning. Sense of omission and commission. So you want pace. It's not free. <laughs> the wages of sin is still dead. You know. So I just use that move from church to politics to what just to put practical content. It's critical thinking, practical reasoning, a reasoning around practicality. I want to ask you, Madam, read it. My person says, he doesn't understand why women are always complaining that they don't enjoy the same freedoms as men do. In other words, the person wants to say they do, they do enjoy the same freedom. So he doesn't see any issue. And if he's a policymaker, he won't do affirmative action. He will not sign it. He will not even see the reason why he should come up for discussion, not in admission of school 
when we are admitting people into a, a certain institution, they won't consider it. So it's an issue. And it's very problematic when you have people that are very equivocal about concepts like this free, like law. You say, I have, I have my, my free choice. So I'm a mother by the grace of God. I'm a mother of four. Then I come, I, I, I tell children at home, look, guys, I'm going to the office, I'll be back. They know their mother is going to the office. By the time I come back, I am a tiger. I'm going to change my face and more. They have plastic surgery and, you know. Now their mother is coming, hello, mommy, mommy, they will enter the guys, tiger sitting there. You think you are free to do? Free just means do everything. Why, you know, aren't you free? Why is it that there's some hole when they say start with? You don't express your freedom of movement that Ghana, <laughs> Ghana sanctions. Why is it that when there is Alabama in Accra, you know, on the days that they are having the traditional, uh, they say uh, ban on uh, noise making and then on specific on a specific night, they say you shouldn't stay outside beyond a certain time. Alabama, the road has been blocked, so to speak, uh, figuratively. Why don't you go moving around? Right? Oh, quiet. So we're ordering. After all, it's still Ghana where we express freedom of movement. And yet you are free as a Ghanaian to move, but you are not free to move. See, two different connotations. See, they are not allowing us to talk. We have freedom of speech. So you are free to speak, but you are not free to speak. Different connotation. If you speak treason, you will not sleep where you slept yesterday. They won't know where you are past. So we have to understand. They have the laws of the land. They have broken the law. Which law? You have to clarify because there are different connotations of the word law. If a child is expected to be born in nine months, that is in obedience to an empirical law, pregnancy for human beings. The approximate uh, period of duration is nine months. Okay? But if the child wants to come, Seven months time. I walk on seven months time. Now I will do a peer by essay. When the child is coming, you say, hey, stay there. Stay. <laughs> if you can, we are breaking the law of biology. You think that law is enforced that way, you will die. You see that? Because it's an empirical law that allows for exceptions. Unlike mathematical law, there are all laws, but the laws of math. You bought, you, you bought two yards of clothes. Then you say, please add three yards. Each yard is 100 cities. When you finish, you say two yards eh, and three yards. So five yards in all. One is 100 Ghana. Okay, then I'll give you 12 cities for all. Share. And they are. Omale, they will beat you at the market or Abu If you go and insist. They don't know, perhaps, they don't know how to write one and two and three, but they understand one, two and three. Like I, I told you during the introductory session, okay? Got the laws of mass. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't permit you to have your version. That's what well defined it, we get it to do. So I'm just showing you that when you equivocate on the word law, you think uh, when, whenever you hear law, it means what you think. The laws of nature, there are several laws. When two ladies go and scratch their faces, because they're fighting over van. He's my guy. He's yours. He's mine. He's yours. He peta, peta, he peta, peta, and they scratch their faces. And one takes you to court. It's a civil matter. The law in question is a civilian thing. Civil. Eh, you go and buy a kubam. You to buy eh, eh, case that. It is a case between the two of you. But when you go and rape your own niece, God forbid that for any one of you. Maybe nine years. You say you took care of yeah, she has grown up. I'm teaching you equivocation, the implications from law to politics to this. That's what I'm doing. Using terms that will affect, because I know the, the, the color of students we have, right? social policy makers, bankers, what have you. You don't have to think that whenever you hear free, go and advocate for free, 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 free. Free, yes, in a certain sense of it, but not free in another sense of it. So you have to know that when you hear free, which connotation of the, of the word free are we using? Or the year born here free, he has forgiven us, he has uh, 
Yeah, we had it for free. Doesn't mean it wasn't paid for. It was paid for. Free SHS is free to the mother and child who didn't pay, but not free to the citizen. We are paying. Where should they come and get the money? <laughs> the money from. You see, so it is a free SHS that we love. It has challenges, yes. Free to the one that was supposed to pay, but not free. Ask him if it's not paid for. See the different connotation? It's paid for. How will we run it? So if you oh, go put the idea, show we have a free, free right, free, free, free dorms come with responsibilities. In another sense of the word free, like a coin. So I can't go and freely change my face to my a tiger and say I'm expressing my free right. What about my child's freedom that she has an entitlement to a mother? You come home, you are in your car, bing, bing. The children come, they say, hey, hey, I'm robber, I'm robber. Why? Their mother is a tiger. She has changed. Or I, did, I decide I'll come home, I'm a man. What about their right? So freedoms should be understood. I'm teaching you philosophy now. So on next occasion, people shouldn't just pursue things and be a good vocal. Which one? Because mathematical laws are enforced because they are clear. They are, their way of enforcing it, I mean, eh, is strict. You can say that media because I made a legal lecture. So when I buy Willie two CDs at the main market, and I say, Madam, add a uh, Ebonari Rover, mm, parents, 10 CD to the Willie two CD. The woman is waiting for me to give her 12 CDs. And I say, No, no, I'm an academic, very enlightened. So total is three CDs. You think they care? They understand. <laughs> Ten plus two. Eh? It is never equal to three cities. That law you are breaking is a mathematical one. Fixed meanings. You see that. However, another law is still law, law, law. So equivocation on the word law is what I'm putting flesh to to help you. When you say the sister will deliver in nine months time, you are only working with an empirical level, a biological one. When you say whenever you throw a ball up, it will come down. Position, eh? It's law of gravity. Why is it that when an airplane lifts itself, it doesn't come down? Another law counters the other law, the force of gravity. Look at the law of flotation. When you put pen, you drop pen in the water, then it sinks. But you put a boat load of people on the sea, it, it won't sink, it's floating. These are empirical laws. So how you enforce them? Hey, media. I have seen oh, a lot of patients. Whenever a patient sits before me and has these symptoms, they die. So anyone, there we go. See the law? This unit five now. Anyone that has symptoms A, B, and C, they die. So if you have symptoms A, B, and C, you will die. No problem. You are generating an universalization based on what you have observed so far. Must yesterday necessarily be like tomorrow? This law is empirical. It's not like the mathematical one. It's not like the legal one. It's not like the criminal code. You talk treason. I was talking about the rape, eh? The uncle raped someone. It is a job in Tumnamin Pengu versus the state. It's not a just versus a uh, Adramans who went to scratch their teeth. That is a civil matter. It's still law, but different connotation. If you go and wear red to the gun campus, then I don't know about now. The vandals okay, will sound you, coco, 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 and you'll be so disoriented in your steps. If you are, if you are not bold, you fall down. Why? Because the social convention here, there's a certain sense of regularity, the way we regulate ourselves. It's not the one that you call police to arrest someone that they are broken down the mood, but you feel uncomfortable. It's a conventional thing. The same like if you visited someone's church. So law, so I'm talking law, one word law. You see how many connotations I'm giving you? That's unit five. People think that whenever they hear law, it is arrest, beat them. If you wanted to be the one they arrest, what kind of arrest? Codify. That's why some things are happening in parliament now, the bill. Otherwise, you would just talk morality. Ah, she say this dress she wore there. Ah, it's not for lecture. Yeah, maybe that law she's breaking is what a moral one. Can you use your eyebrows, Ooh. and the sister will know that something is amiss because she thought she's fine. Then maybe next time 
she might want to conform. It is still a law, but the way we enforce that law is not the way we enforce someone who has stolen a laptop from court or someone who jammed traffic light. See that? That's another law. Even in the criminal code, there's one that is treason. It had been too soon that he went to enjoy his little girl's machine. <laughs> it's a crime, but we'll see where he was placed. We'll go to court and we'll see him. Treasonable ones, if you are not careful, we'll even see where the people took you. These are different levels, different connotations of the word law. If you got that, you should understand. Customary law. This. So, when you say it is, you are looking at law, or you have no bad. So, I, I went to talk about law a little provocation on the word law to help you and me in our deliberations and our policies and our discussions and what have you. Laws, the word law, very equivocal concept. Now move here. Well, equivocal its implications on people. People don't see, they think whenever you talk law, if you don't pay your tithe, which policeman arrests you on the way. You're breaking a certain law, that is your title, but another connotation of it. Okay. If you go law now, back to my freedom one. So free will, na free, free, na free this, free that, free this. And people mix it up and they, they wrongly also judge. They say, yes, it's nice, no, it's free in a certain sense of the word. Very free. People are going to pay nothing from their pocket. See that? But it's not free in the sense that the nation pays for it. When you finish, you are looking for root. <laughs> Here of root. Now, if you eat your chick, uh, your your eggs, eh, and you don't have chicken, they're angry. So someone has to help us all see that look. A deep in way free in that sense of the word free, but everything else is freely given. Freely have you received? Freely should you give? Was it freely received? Or they said, "They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength." <laughs> Was it freely given? Yes. As if you did nothing. Is that the sense of free that is being he that receives him will give the power to become the son? The thing is freely given in the sense of the word free, as in you didn't work for it. But you have to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's another sense of the word free. The thing is freely given, and yet you have to receive it. Do something. So if you don't understand that. This person, now to our friend on the screen, is equivocating on free. You, you will think that he has made an argument. Look at his argument. There's the two people, he doesn't understand why two extremes of people, males and females, especially he's addressing women, say they don't enjoy the same freedom as men. After it's a free country, and everybody is free to do what they like. He has finished. That's his argument. In other words, because it is a free country, Ghana is a free country, and we are free to do what we like, women and men freely have what? equal freedoms. That is the problem. Let's interrogate it. Is Ghana a free country? Yes, when you mean free as in what? When you live here, there's no restriction on what radio station you watch. Internet access is there. You are not restricted about which things you can sell. You don't go to the government to determine whether you use toothpaste or a back of the So could yeah. <laughs> the state, the choice state. You choose. So we are a free country. We are not under curfew. We are not fighting another nation. <laughs> you see, so in that sense of the word free, Ghana is free. Even that alone, if you turn it, it's gonna free. Look at IMF on our troops. Look at the labor agitations. Even uh, employing others, uh, more hands to teach and to do certain things. There's a restriction on it. The state wants to, it can't, because of the share uh, transaction, we are under a certain. So, in a certain sense of the word free, we are not free. Is Africa free? Is uh, uh, Ghana independent. Independent, yes, in a certain sense of the word, but in another sense, we are not. You take your own product to the market, then the, the one buying tells you this one, buy this one. You think you're a free person. 
So you see that the free I'm using keeps shifting free as an ability to do may be there for both male and female like that. But free as in whether we actually have what it takes to do is another issue. Why is it I didn't eat breakfast at KMPC this morning? Everyone tell me, my dear friends. <laughs> and biscuit breakfast uh, is there. You are free to go and sit at Kempi and have your breakfast. Van, <laughs> Van keeps laughing on my screen. Listen, why haven't we are in the queue at, if you are on campus at Bush Canteen or Night Market, the queue is wrong. It bookends. Why are you not at the palm? Or yeah, whatever. Rest in your back. If you have to come and have your exam and you come to Accra or something. I'm talking to you students, eh? Why is it that you didn't go and do your uh, hoteling if you had needed some few days to set to right? You didn't go to Kufo's hotel or the other ones here or East Legon. Fine ones are there. Why are you patching? <laughs> you are free to go to that hotel, yet you are not free to go to that hotel. Did you see what I just did? The word is free. The first one is you have access. Excuse me, there's availability. But do you really have what it takes to do? So these are different connotations of the word. Now let's even grant it for the purposes of argumentation because of that our friend speaking on our, our, our screen now. Let's say Ghana is a free country. Does it mean women and men Freely have the same freedoms. They have the same freedom. You find a snake in your room right now. Or oh, God forbid, God forbid, fire outbreak. They go, Mem and bro, and Mem and bro. <laughs> Where are the men? You are men, sister. Go and look for a stone and go and kill that snake yourself. Huh? What men can do, women can do with that. <laughs> and then you want to argue for that. But they don't open the gate for us again. We say we can do everything. You are a fish. The man is a bird. Fishes can do what birds do. Just as birds can do what fishes do. If you remove the fish from water, you have killed it. All. Sisters who advocate for us, watch the way you advocate. The advocacy should make the water that the fish lives in clean. To say, don't throw rubber into the, the water bodies. Give us shade to so plant trees around us. It will all be fine argument that keep us in the water. So we can enjoy our benefits there. We can get maternity, everything. You are going to do what women can do, men can do. God didn't create it that way. Brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm just advising a social policy maker. Mm. You go and argue at the end like this, okay? You should all come and let's fly. Because as you are sitting, all your argument is we must fly. We, do, we, must, we don't have wings. Men do day to day come to swim in the water to so advocate for things that work for the water situation. The women need maternity leaves, the women need this. You have to oh, sir, don't go and say, eh, and we too, you have to allow us equally, equally there. When we all get uh, appointed to the company, nobody goes for maternity. If men go, we go for maternity, we go for maternity. Now we we'll see who we'll suffer. When you have to carry chairs into the offices to fix it, so the brothers should come and we can be please. Everybody is quiet with the women. Say, oh, they are women. No. As soon as they say that, okay, because you're a woman to them, if they say, oh, then that one there, you say, what men can do, women can do it. And men, man, bro, and men, man, bro. the brother doesn't have them to kill a snake. But he's not free to say it. He can't even cry publicly in Africa. He won't cry a woman that beloved mother, mother's mother, he wants to just cry a man. He wants to go to a man and are behaving like that. Men don't cry, bear men, bear men. It's not free to even cry emotionally. Sister, after she has caused the trouble herself, then she starts crying. <laughs> He's not treating me. Sisters, sisters, are you there? I'm talking freedoms that are not equal. Yes, but the person speaking very she doesn't see any difference. See that I said something for the brothers. Now I'm going to the sisters. I'm going to stand with my ladies now. Listen. Two people get busy and get pregnant. James, let me mute your thing for you, eh? But one carries it nine months. Over. We are grow. We have gone three times by the grace of God. I have four. 
So I know what I'm saying. So it's a Jew. Emotionally, psychologically, physically, fine, maybe I say fine in quote, eh? It's a valley judgment, slim and cute. One child can even deform a woman if God doesn't come in. The whole thing, you have to eat for two. Yourself and the baby. When I had my twins inside my tummy, by the grace of God, eh? I had to eat for three. Can you imagine? It's crazy. You don't want to eat something, they say eat. Some green, green, something, they give you drink. The person goes through all that. The brother can still walk around saying he's a veggie. <laughs> How do you... I'm talking freedom. They are not the same. So anybody that doesn't see, and it doesn't mean that we are not free, both males and females. We don't have equal freedoms. We do. When you mean freedom in another sense of the word, that's what I'm belaboring like that. I'm overemphasizing. Another use of the word will not be poor. Sometimes it is give you two instances. You can't even cry. Access is not the same as you know, the thing can be available and not accessible. That's why I use the campus. Why are you eating there? Why would I like 366 Ghana cities, 10 pesos? You are using a small, small to gather and be able to and be able to pay your fees. You say you should go eat campus breakfast. We shall get there, but for now, dear, as a coco to Ghana. <laughs> Akala, three Ghana, I saw Ted, and I'm to go back. It's a busy this. <laughs> yeah, I saw Ted, right? So a day if you demand 20, 25 cities, yeah. Now, this one that I'm talking about, I don't know the breakfast. The last time I heard about 900 cities, eh, 90 cities or something. Eh, hey, sir. Oh, but everybody can go there. Oh, sir, yes, that one we know. It's, we are freely able to go there. But so then we can freely go. It's another discussion. So I'm sure that with all my elaboration, you will know that a brother speaking, and I think will be a brother, does he understand that even how I work the maps on the day of the exam can be affected by what comes into my system, Madam Red, if I get into red by that morning. The brother will never get into red. See that. It can affect even my posture when I went for the interview. I'll get angry. When they are playing with me small, they, they go, hey, Madam. Maybe you can smile a little bit, but welcome. But then she, please, please, I just came here for an interview. I don't want, I like this thing. Like, oh, sister, people are interviewing you to admit you a mood, something that is naturally restricting her for the period. Sometimes after three hours, one day or something, it's gone. Women don't have equal freedoms. Like men don't have equal freedoms with women. When we call it out or someone calls it out, don't go and say it is a free country. That's another use of the word free. That's all I mean. Then you go further to say, after everybody is free to do what they like. Can you enter into a neighbor's room, get into their fridge and get yogurt and sit down, take their flat remote and be watching TV. In the name of Ghana is a free, free country. When you get up at the exam hall, I said that earlier. Ghana is a free country, yes. Not under food data or anything. Freedom of expression. Will you go and talk? The way you want to talk anywhere. You don't have that freedom, yet you are in a country that is a free country. So this person equivocated, and I think that the point is well made. I could go on and on and on and on and on. We have to move on. So equivocation just means you oscillate from one of the meanings of the word to another of its meanings and still make it look as if you are saying the same thing. I projected, look on your screen. Make it look as if you are talking about the same meaning of that. Look at the example three. Uh, let's let's ask uh, Manuel to read for me. Thank you, Yvonne. I'll come back to you. So be on standby. Mudira, I saw your hand. So I'll call you later. Manuel, read. Uh, no, Manuela. Sorry, Manuela, read example three for me. If Manuela is not there, then I'll ask who is very uh, close there very quickly. Mudira, are you close by? Just unmute and ask and read for me. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Example three. 
Example. I'm reading um example. Yes. Sure, philosophy helps you argue better. But do we really need to encourage people to argue? There is enough hostility in this world. Very good. Well read. See that. The person confuses two meanings of the word argue. The first meaning is a good one. You present evidence to support the claims you make. That's argue in the first sense. So when you say you like arguing, the one philosophy trains you to do. It's very good. You don't say things without justification or grounds. You provide evidence to support your claim. The other one, the other use of the word argue there is argue as an exchange of words, disputing, contention, disagreement. Okay. Let, let me show you. I think I have a slide that talks, speaks to that. That, that one is not positive. So if someone says you like Aguiyama, it depends on the context and who is speaking. Here, this one. From your screen now. This one. Win at all costs. No. That is not what the philosopher trains you to do. The philosopher trains you to proffer reason to support what you are saying. That's argumentation. We could back on star. This is right. They will come to a, 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 a panel discussion. When you say this, oh, that's a 1692. And a 1946, and you say they, they, they point to it to ground what they are saying. So this way of doing this ballot box thing where the thing is tainted like that. It's the reason why we change it. Blah, blah, blah. See, that's positive. It advances argumentation to help us make this decision. This one on your screen is you give you just everything crabby the what where I'm standing here is so that's argumentation that is not fruitful. The person is arguing as in presenting them. There is another meaning, another connotation of the word. I must win all cost. Contentious. Eh? And this altar, the one speaking, what Madame just read for us, Madira read for us. Where are we? Uh, this one confuses the two and criticizes. That's equivocation. How do we know that he's confused? Look at the conclusion. He says there's enough hostility in this world. So philosophers shouldn't teach people how to argue. Even though philosophy tells people to argue, they shouldn't do that. They shouldn't teach people to argue or encourage people to argue. See, they move, they are moved because there's enough. Hostility means there's enough tension in the world already. So it means the person thinks that the two uses of the word argue all point toward argumentation as exchange of words and contention, what have you. No. The first one is argumentation. The one philosophy teaches helps you argue better. It, it helps you advance reasons better for your claim. The second one is the negative one. You become contentious, what have you. But the conclusion says there's enough hostility in this world. So the argument looks as if whenever we talked about the word argue, it meant what? Hostility. That's why this is what a uh, provoker. I think that the point is well made. Now we can move to types of definitions. When we have read through it and then I'll speak to it, let me take uh, Prince. Prince, your hand went up if it's still there. Then Harriet and read the next one. Prince, just read quickly, pa, quick, quick, quick. Okay, if Prince is not able to, is Prince reading? Unmute first, say. Prince, watch it. Jill, I saw your hand there. Was it to read or to ask a question? I'll, I'll make a note of it. Oh dear, where is Prince? Prince, uko yi ni ama wahume mana. Yes, madam. Yes, ma. This would be by a gadget, I read. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that types of definitions. One, we have lexical, that's dictionary. We have number two, we have extensive, that's pointing to or demonstrating. Number three, we have operational, that's steps or instructions. We have stipulative, that is fired into brackets, agreed upon the upon by users or think of jargons. Then we have the point five as theoretical, that is theory based or institutionalized and then we have real that's idea ideal or eliminative or essential as if needing can replace definience in all contexts of use note overlaps in types of definitions discussed thank you very good well done 
So you would see that whenever we want to give meaning to a word, we can do so in several ways. We can either give meaning by pointing to the lexicon, the dictionary, or we give meaning by ostensive definitions. I'm a little distracted there. I'll continue shortly. Okay, so suppose someone doesn't know the meaning of uh, binoculars or stethoscope. So, uh, what is stethoscope? Someone sent me a message, I think, uh, yesterday or so. Said, oh, please, uh, plagiarism. No? When you were talking about it, I, I, I didn't understand. I said, Google plagiarism and tell me what you found out. That's a fine way of looking for the meaning of okay, So, you don't know plagiarism. I can say, oh, look it up in a dictionary. You see that? Then I've given you a lexical definition. Is that difficult? No. But sometimes to, to give meaning of a word, example two now, a type of meaning, I could point to the thing to show you. So let's say a sister and a brother go out on a date. The brother wants to you know, make her feel good or make the sister wants to make the guy feel good, whichever way. Ladies, you to take guys out and it's a Valentine. We must move shame brand make a can no more black. Why? They are blank. <laughs> so you go out and then they bring <laughs> they bring the menu. And then they are put, mm, oh bra, I have three sons and I say, my word, I speak for the boys, <laughs> the brother. No, okay. No, 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 they are at the table, then they bring the menu. They say pineapple upside down. <laughs> one of them is pineapple upside down. The other one is so below inside out. This one is a pizza a sideways stretch. They say, baby, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sister to doesn't know which one to order for. Say, okay, which one is the one that you call the pineapple upside down? Because there are pictures of the meal there. You see? One way of giving meaning is, oh, uh, the pineapple has this one, this. This one time, so I, you take the menu and point to it. To make it meaningful, stand in fact, maybe you can say, okay, this one has some fufu and soup on it, yeah, then I wonder what. It will be more meaningful than this. Oh, if you want the pineapple outside, that it is a Caucasian meal that has uh, seafood and I didn't know right. Plenty talk, show me. To so show me the liver. Or the, if you like, the liver of the one who is drinking plenty, show me. To show me that hey, if you continue drinking like this, what can I see something? See the teeth. You don't brush your teeth plenty. That's to the class three boy who doesn't brush. Maybe that would be meaningful to them. Show the drug addict perhaps eh, a home. Not a house. Let them have a feeling of if you had a wife and children at this your age. You are mentoring them and go and play with them and they visit and what have you are. Okay, your mouth. So you are praying, yes, to pray, sometimes spiritual. You should give the medication. But some of the things, it is ostentation. Let the person see. So you go and visit in the evangelism team, go to the, uh, the place, the hospital, what have you. They see couples with their children, not to judge them, but for them to say, ah, they should have a longing for what? Life proper. When you come, you are talking plenty grammar. Sometimes it doesn't make impact. Ostensive definition. Okay. They work. Do simulations. Fire service brother. Yeah. Set up uh, or community health nets. Or community what I don't know. Yeah. It's more meaningful. Show them. Do it. So you either point to it to give meaning or you demonstrate. People say, listen to what I'm telling you, don't watch my life. If you are beating the man, the woman too much at home, your son is learning it. I'm telling you. Even your, your, your lady is learning. What she's learning is that men are no good. Because she sees it. That's what she's observing. It is demonstrated all around. That is so impactful. He says, we teach and give you mental images. The kingdom of heaven is like this, so that your mind goes there to see it. It's like a fisherman that went to fish. It's like a farmer that went to sow seed. It's, so you are, he's standing there with you, but you can picture. That one works more effectively than plenty drama. 
when you are dealing with an untutored target group. Okay. Untutored meaning they are not experts in what you are dealing with. It comes alive. So lexical definition, it points to the lexical, the dictionary. Ostensive definition, you point to or you demonstrate it. So we want to drive, drive and turn on the ignition. Press the accelerator. Make sure your seatbelt is on. And you do that. And are they okay? It's all operational. Watch my screen, please. We are giving the steps to follow to get there. It has its place. But I think there is more augmented. You augment that method when you add the ostensive, if you can. So the instructor, it sits in the seat. You see, this is the ignition. Eh? This is, you see what? You will point to it. Ah, uh, spark it. Uh, that is stipulating. Look at my screen now. Maybe I spark a car. Stipulative definition means you use the word, which already has a general meaning. You coin that word for your purposes. The first group, when I met them, I told them, my son said, you are dripping. Hey, drip, dear, I'm the nurse. Do I have any nurse? Please, if you're a nurse, raise your hand. I'll give you all his, if you're a nurse. <laughs> now, everybody will be a nurse. Last, I said, I'm a nurse. I told my student that I am a pantomime girl. Uh, old, old student, I completed in pantomime girl. So, Everybody who is a sight there, sight girl, everybody who is a sight test, raise your hand. Oh, then the brothers. <laughs> they, are, they are raise their hand. They are, they are a. Listen, Antenas, when you hear drip, is it not a, someone is sick, they put it on them and then it, 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 it drips into the air. I don't know. That's drip. So if you don't know and you don't ask for clarity, people may, may be using the same word but for their purposes, they are going to So when they say drip, they mean something. When Commonwealth people say they are going to charge, they mean something else. Don't go for iPhone charger or brush charger. I mean, use word there. Was it was the word? Didn't it was? When the two ladies say, uh, "Please, where can you buy me a biscuit?" I have to. Uh, Sometimes it comes to my we say osmo, osmo they check osmosis when I was a student. I don't know what this is. Osmosis in science is the movement of water molecules from a region of lower concentration of salt to the region of higher concentration. It's science. It has a meaning in science. But people have picked that word then and they use it for their purpose. When I say osmo they check, all the visitors will be there, they will know. Unless they are part of our jargon language or they have a relative or someone who understands. Otherwise, you will know. So you can be sitting there and the person says, please, can you check if the things are on the lines? And for the two of them speaking, they mean check if there is enough food in the fridge because the visitor has stayed for long. They have to put something together for him or her. So, but the visitor says, oh, check and see if there are things on the line. Stipulatively, it might be, Check if we have food in the fridge. And in the past, <laughs> if you came to my home, you will see that a lot. You know, you even know. We'll be speaking across. The point I'm making is people stipulate into for your advertising purposes, stipulate. Momo. Para. What is this atamita lumifantry? Eh? Wofa. Who is going to say that at the counter? Grandma, to go and buy Malaya drug. You say you will buy atamita. <laughs> not that the people don't want to buy they will remember it's not catchy find something low nuts if low nuts everyone can say something so the a good advertising skill is one that is able to stipulate see everybody's going to buy newspaper they say garbage paste every paste is possible in Ghana you have to be catchy so what they can agree, they say, ah, I say buy graphic. Say, eh, hey. oh, graphic, graphic. Hey, my papa wait on that man's own. They say, oh, but that man doesn't sell graphic. He sells PMP and this and that. But he said, you go and buy graphic. He meant, <laughs> he meant what? A newspaper. But then the one that is coined to represent all of them. So I see the challenge with that. So when you stipulate me, then I say, buy me biscuit. Sister, sister, I have two biscuits in my bathroom. Oh, then be a movie in there. 
or something like that, buy our biscuit for us. And you hear it, and you think it is the one we bring Fanta on it. My brother, we are talking our biscuit is stipulating the condition. I think it's clear now. It's used, is what I have told you. So sometimes, for the purposes of our debate, we say for your thesis, this thesis that I'm writing, let me get to your third and fourth years, or longest year or research, you can say that when I say democracy, I mean elected uh, generals, elected officials, not inheritance. So kingdom cannot be part of what we are discussing. Something like that. You are stipulating to help for clarity. See? Clarity. Because the word has its meaning out there. Then we have theoretical definition, theory based. You must have an, a whole understanding of that academic discipline to grab that definition. Water is H2O, is an example of that. H for hydrogen, a two is a subscript. You write it below the line. The O is not zero, it's oxygen. There's supposed to be a one subscript after the, the, uh, the O there. Is taking off, it's part of the discipline's understanding of what you have written. And it is at room temperature. If you put water in the fridge, it is no longer water. <laughs> if you put it on fire, it is vapor. It will change, its chemical conf configuration will change. So when you write H2O, you are speaking chemistry. You are saying water, but you are speaking a whole chemistry. A person that is untutored in chemistry cannot grab it. That's the point. We want you to have effective communication. So you may go and do a presentation and if you're not careful, just a few appreciate because they can connect to the technicality. But maybe you're a policymaker or you are, you are buying for something or you are evangelizing or something. You have to come down to the level of your target group. Very important. That's what the definition is as a critical thinker. Make the impact, effective communication. You can get the whole nation rally behind you on a national agenda, if you communicate strongly and well, for them to catch it, not impose, not to come and impress us. We, we, we feel so impressed by how you presented, and yet we don't know what you have said. Okay, so the whole point is theory based definitions will work well if you are, for example, advocating for funding for your projects, okay, for instance, or, or what we do. Or you are going to meet IMF, for example, to show them that we qualify for the next tranche. You have to speak technically. You know your inflation, you know your indices, you know the fundamentals, you can say this. That is not for public consumption. When you come to us, you have to tell us, okay, inflation has come down because first, you know, the word inflation just means this, 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 this. In stipulative terms or better than ostensive terms, you know that you would have gone to the market with your 50 Ghana and you would have bought three bags of that rice. Now, the money's worth has slowed down. So you can buy three bags. It can buy half of one of the bags. That means our inflation has gone up by so and so number. You are still telling me this. If I you go to IMF to discuss with them, you talk inflation. You're not going to show them how one bag of rice. I don't know. You talk technically. That is where you can show that you know your stuff and receive the help you need. Anyway, so there is a place for each of those definitions. And that's why in your kitchen, when you're cooking, that's not the time to go, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, calling the house help. Not educated. Bring me H2O, the banco is burning. Bring H2O, I, at room temperature. <laughs> the banco will burn. The banco will burn. Why? Because that place, this is the... <laughs> the sister cannot grab your uh, H2O uh, definition of water. Then. You could just point to the bottle or the bowl that has the water <laughs> and say, yeah, yeah, get me that. Ostensive. And that is more effective. Or you can say, give me the water. And it will work. See that. So there's a place for each one of them. I'll do the last one and take questions. Real definition. Ideal definition, eliminative, essential, all of them representing the same type of definition. It has several names. Let me use myself for example, and then it can help you see what I'm doing there. My name is Nancy. Nancy is my first name that my father gave me. Okay. I'm called Miles. Miles is my father's name that I inherited in addition to the first name they gave me. 
I'm called Bafoji. Okay, Bafoji, and he's my husband's name. That I've added to my name. Okay. So when you say Nancy, you're calling me. When you say I'm, you're calling me. I was born on a Saturday. When you say uh, Miles, you're calling me, Doctor Miles. My doctorate is on my maiden name, Miles. When you say Mrs. James, you're calling me as my husband's wife. Doctor Miles is me as my father's daughter. Dr. Nancy, of course, you don't see a uh, doctor on their face name. Nancy is my face name. Uh, Sister Ama or Rama, my Nancy's reference to the day I was born. What did I do? I showed you why the label. Look at real definition. It is real definition because it's doing what the definition should really do. If you define a word, then wherever the definience is, it should represent the definition and vice versa. If I use the word, uh, the definition somewhere, it should replace its definition and the definition should be able to replace its definition wherever I use it. That is how definition should really behave. That is why if I define five, the number five as three plus two, it is a real definition because wherever I see five, I can put three plus two there. And wherever I see three plus two, I can put five there. The meaning won't change in mathematics. That's why, that's why. So that definition, if I say five is three and two put together, this definition is a real one. Because of the meanings of the terms I'm using, these terms are closed concepts. Let's go slow. You can replace the definition with the definitions in every context of its use in that discipline. The meaning won't change. That is a real definition. This feature of a real definition I just gave you is what we call its eliminative feature. Look on your screen. I showed you why I'm called Miles. That's my father's name that he added to me or mine. Okay, look, look at it. So a real definition is what eliminative. You can eliminate the definition and put in the definitions. The meaning will change in that discipline. That can change it. Wherever you use it means that in the math. It is an ideal definition. It means it is perfect. That's what a, a definition should ideally be. Ideally, a kappa. You are dealing with it correct. What it is really. Ideal, perfect, without flaws. That's how a, a definition should be. So real definitions are actual definitions. The rest we saw up, they have weaknesses and flaws, and I showed you that. I tell students that if you are looking for an ideal guy, you will bleh. <laughs> ideal guys, guys are not on it. Hmm. Eh? You know, they are not Enoch, Elijah. Moses, Abraham, they are all dead and gone. <laughs> so you may want to die and go to heaven and see. Yeah. Yes, people like uh, looking for the ideal, uh, ideal, guys. Oh, ideal guys and ideal ladies are not on earth. They are not common. Right. If you find them on earth, God, God comes to him, push them away. He takes them away. Just so you can use that. We are sure. Oh, oh, God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Prince, Prince no, is there. No problem. You can ask questions. They are not common. Maybe you people are there, but you are not common. So ideal definitions are also not common. They okay. You have definitions that we can call ideal only in mathematics and, and logic and some aspects of physics, not all physics. Why? So these disciplines are what deductive in nature. They are just dealing with form. They don't deal with content. And so they can have concepts that you can define them in an ideal way to understand even number and i say what's an even number and a number that divides two equally would have to remain that one uh, right so let's get some some examples of even number i'll start for you two yes continue for me please Four, 
Yeah. Yeah. We get to Julia. We start Julia to Julia for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> zillion two, zillion four. If it's zillion, come who's never going to buy three, two, eight. Now listen to me, Matea, my bra. You will know clearly that it is a number, and then its denotations. You know them. I'm going to. I'm introducing a new concept. Too. Everything I'm doing is strategic. Watch, pay attention. There is no contestation about. The reference, the denotation of that word. Okay. You can't contest, you can't argue. You can't say that's for you, even number, imato, we are doing math. They say even number is a tree or it's a table. No, you say even number is any number. That's the first thing. That divides two equally. You know, two, two is not ambiguous without any remainder. That's why, so we, we clearly, look at your screen. It means even number, it's a well-defined term, a well-defined concept. It is a term whose meaning, please look on my screen, eh? makes it clear when you define even number. It is, its meaning is so clear without any ambiguity. It makes you know the specific object, as if it's a thing, or individuals, or properties, if it is describing some uh, concepts with the properties that are correctly called out by that word. There's no ambiguity. There's no confusion about what it refers to. It's a number. That number to divide two equally doesn't leave any remainder. So three cannot be even number. Five is not even number. Seven is not even number. And we don't contest, don't argue. About the meaning in our in that discipline. No, it's clear. You can say that for even number. Can you say that for bachelor? No. When you define bachelor as an unmarried adult male, are you telling me that your first degree that you are looking for invest from from the University of Ghana bachelor's degree is an unmarried man's degree? <laughs> no. So for bachelor, when you, uh -huh. <laughs> the buttons that they call bachelor's bachelor, it's not an unmarried man's. Button. The flower called bachelor's flower. It's not a normal. So you see, I said bachelor, but before you know it, human beings will be coming in one, 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 one as the denotation. And then before long, certificates will join the queue. The common certificate, bachelor's. Philosophy certificate, bachelor's. Before you know it, flowers will join the queue. They are all coming. They are all bachelor's. Oh, but I'm calling bachelor's. Yes, we are bachelor's. You can do that with even number. It says clear in its reference such that there is no ambiguity about what it means. Why? That concept is a well-defined concept. And I told you they are ideals, so they are not common. You find them only in mathematics, logic, modus ponens, modus ponens, uh, mathematics, addition, subtraction. What we mean by addition is not subject to contestation. You can't argue. You have three, you added two. You say it's not equal to five, it's equal to what? If you say, oh, doc, doc maybe it's two plus three, you can say it's the same, two plus the same five, which me I can say is the same as 10 minus five. Yes, 10 minus five now, one and five, they are not different because the concepts in maths are well defined. That is what I've showed you. So when you define a word, a concept that is mathematical in nature, it will be a real definition. That's why even number, when you define even number as a number that divides two equally with that element, that is a typical example of what a real definition. So what is a real definition? Back to that slide, keep looking on our screen. A definition, excuse me. A definition that is ideal. Hold on, I want you to see it well. Ideal, eliminative, there. Keep looking up, I'm getting there, uh -huh, this one. Before we get to open text here, look up, the one in purple up there. Huh? It is eliminated. Wherever you see the definition, we can replace the definition. It's ideal, it's not common. And it is perfect. Essential, what it stands for essential is not in contestation. Now, can you do same, what we just did? Can we do the same 
thing with words like democracy, no, look. Can we do the same with words like fidelity, infidel? If you have a wife cry, you go and get a girlfriend, okay? okay. Just one small girlfriend. I'm not saying okay, like I want my husband to do that. Okay, maybe you won't do it. Listen, by the grace yeah. of God. Eh? Yeah. Mm. But I'm just showing you infidel. <laughs> just one attachment. They say forest, then you get a garden. That one, they will say you are infidel in a certain religious setting like mine. We don't do that. To each man, it's why one. one man, one, one district, one down. <laughs> <laughs> one man, one wife. Okay, if you even get an addition, top up, so to speak, it is a sign of infidelity. We we'll say you are an infidel. But in faith, in religion, nah, another person can have five wives. In fact, it's too far as you can take care of them. I'm told. Ah, they will even respect you and they will give you a title because you help save some lonely women so to speak, and took care of them. I'm just trying to show, look at, so infidelity doesn't have, it's not a well-defined concept. It's an open class concept. Now look at the title. It has meanings. Remember value judgment? I told you, learned that very well. How people see it varies. Look at democracy. Some do kingdom class parliament put together, and yet it is a democracy. UK is a democracy. People look up to them. But there is an inherited role. Before Queen, Queen, I think Queen ruled for 70 years, right? Yeah. Plus, if I'm if I'm mistaken, I can tell you. Hey, I'm imagining Nanado wants to rule for 70 years. Or hey. Donald Trump hey. or Biden. Hey. You see what I'm <laughs> saying? Well, what <laughs> mean? Yeah, we die in the Hey, hey, I'm from a job. What boy? I'm just showing you, but they are democracies. You see the point? Look at America, having a king. King of America. There's a confusion in this people. <laughs> Why? Uh -huh. But it is still a democracy. Look at justice. We keep revising our justice systems. Have we ever revised the meaning of addition or subtraction since you were born? <laughs> they don't, the meanings are closed. The concept we are dealing with is closed. When you do math, when you do logic, the law of identity, the law of, I don't want to bore you with them. The principle of non-contradiction. One word cannot be, and, and, and I am, and I am not, however, I'm trying to be yet. What kind of thing is that? They are the rules that guide our thoughts. They are called laws of thought. We don't revise them. When you revise them, we, we launch into absurdity. They will, we can't have language. So, closed concepts are found in, in what? Disciplines like the ones I've mentioned, they are deductive. And they can, the close concepts are the ones that you can define them ideally. You see that they can have a real definitions. They can have eliminative definitions. But when you deal with sociology, psycho, philosophy, religion, uh, politics, natural science, eh, anatomy, what have you, you are dealing with mainly, of course, there they, they are always an interplay of the two, but the emphasis for this discipline is on open texture terms, terms that are open class. So you have to argue, present alternatives, you know, revise, review, show your perspective to the matter, and then we engage. That's why you can never embark on instant justice. No, sir. No, don't do it. I pray that God will help us all. Sometimes the thing is so annoying. We caught the person red hand, they are now time. And God has killed all of us on earth. Because what you think is just may not be. It may. We just have to engage and see it from the person's view. The person thought like uh, Robin Hood. He's stealing from the rich, so to speak, to feed the poor. You may say, oh, but, but, but what if? So that what if it was this and not that, and that, that is the discussion you have to have around it and met out punishment where there is one. According to what? Because if you let the person who is offended judge, they will say one rape is equal to 10,000 castrations of the person who raped me in their family because she's feeling pain. These are open class concepts as a critical mind. You have to see. They are not so life is not two plus three equals five. 
If you study, then you will pass. You have studied. Then you must follow, you will pass. That is logic. Modus ponens, unit six. You get it. If you study, then you will pass. You have studied. Then it must follow that you will pass. By the logic of it, it follows the pattern. But if you study, then you will pass. You have studied. What if you don't leave to the day of the exam? How will you pass? That's the content. It's not the form. The logician is dealing with the form, set, set. If you study, then you will pass. And you have also done the studying. Then what we should expect is what? The passing. You have studied. The rule says you will pass. And you have studied, but what if that day doesn't come for you to be alive? I mean, Pingua. How do you pass? So there is a part of life and knowledge treatment that is dealing with content, not form. The same way two plus three is equal to five. But two ladles, excuse me, everyone watch. Listen, eh, if you have to, ladles, eh, two, how do you say it easily? Ladle, ladle, a two, that we will let a quanta, a fantasy of fanta. Two ladles of porridge, two of that, two, so you are fetching porridge into a cup. Two ladles of porridge plus three ladles of porridge. Can be equal to one cup of porridge. See what I just did? <laughs> Two plus three. It can be equal to one. This is not math, which is dealing with the form, because the mathematical form is dealing with the specific thing. So if you say two yards plus three yards, it should be equal to five yards. I'm talking about if you transfer the form into content, sometimes two cups of tea plus three cups of tea can be equal to one saucepan of tea. So two plus three can be five. If you are dealing with content, you don't have to go around thinking that Ma say is solving all our time. It gives you a form. Okay, if you got that, I use all these examples to help you understand open texture and closed concept. And why it is that when a term is well-defined on your screen now, then it is the one that can have a real definition or an ideal definition or an eliminative one. And why we call it eliminative, ideal, or real. Any question. And I'll do the last lap. We are out. I lower all the hands and I take your questions. Any questions, please? If you have a question, just raise your hand. I said Jill will read the next one. Senior Felix, let's take your question whilst Jill gets ready to read on diagnosing oh, problems. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you so much for how far you are, you are bringing us. Um, you. Uh, I, my question has to do with um, the relationship between open texture and um, value judgment. Value judgment. Yes. yes. Yes, they are connected. It, because the terms we are dealing with are open class concepts. It might, its definition might be influenced by the person's point of view all the time. Okay. UK citizens are not that. They love their kingdom. Papa, generally speaking, I know there will be others who have a, a, a apprehensive towards the system, but they love it. They can even tell how, you know, this woman joined and he has come to pull her away and all that. They love it, but it's a kingdom. When I told you that, would you like it if the next <coughs> president of Ghana becomes a king? No, we don't query, we don't question. Look at Asante Henry and how does Asante revere their king. He will rule, I think it is for life, until he passes. God, we pray for you, so you should look for long. She died. The people's rule, that's democracy, says someone. And for another person, no, democracy must be freedom of expression. Kebi money, kebi. Say something because it's, that's how someone says. Democracy. Another person say, no, 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 democracy is government of the people by the people. What does that mean? All of us should go and, and sit at parliament, or all of us should have executive power. What? Something, no, no, no. democracy is majoritarian rule, what the majority says. So if we have 50% plus one, the 49% can go to hell, so to speak. You see, versions, it is inspired to answer your question directly by their viewpoint. So uh, the one that says having five wives is fine, so far as you can take care of it. It's not just uh, the, the 
Islamic religion. I, I don't know if I got it right. Even some okay. conventions say so as well. Some quote and unquote, you know, they say, look, okay, don't go far. Look at Solomon, the one that God gave wisdom. <laughs> People don't like these examples, the church books. But I'm a church book who is there, address it. The guy had 300 wives and 700 concubines. Quite. It just look. <laughs> Are you sure he wouldn't even con some of his children? You know, how do you know 700 concubines? I saw the one that recently, the, the drama that he set up around that. I'm sure that you, how do you know them? He had wisdom. What kind of wisdom? The one he pleaded for. Okay, look at David in his in Kukurabum when he became a grandpa. He asked for a fresh girl to keep his bed warm. A man after God's own heart. <laughs> I'm talking Christian, but that's one I can I can your largest to it. See that? Yeah. When uh the recent recently the professor once said 29 year old girl, you are all stressed out. I'm also stressed out. But you see symbols there. The point is, should it be the case, Malaysia? How we see it, that world then is that the, the world now? So say yes. Open texture terms are inspired by values. People's values can be, can be very instrumental there. And it's actually because of the nature of the world. You can have your values playing on mathematics. I need to, you can't say, as for me, I see addition to be subtraction. So I've entered the market, like I told you. When I bought three yards and I added five yards, how I see it in perspective, if you have three and you add two, it should be one. So I'm paying for one. You will see, they will teach you to see well. It's not open to discussion. See that. But you can have your view about whether the product they sell they sold to you is smooth enough. Like if they you say it was a smoothie and you say, oh, I don't think that it was blended well enough. The other person by my so I think it's fine. I think it tastes fine. Oh, the popcorn is a bit fluffy. I was expecting to be a bit crispy. That is you, your perspective. See that. So we can go on along those tangents, but it is because of the name. That is what we wanted. Hey, I can't hear you. Yeah. Did I better hear me? Did anyone hear me, please? Just to be sure you can hear. Yeah. No. Yes, okay, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma Right. Uh, it was, it was no, we did, but no. we went off briefly. So we have the last slide. We can't hear you. It's fine. Don't worry. Probably there are some people. They are vim, they are them comes when they want to show that they are crashing. Meanwhile, if you ask them something like that, if you ask them something like that, they will hide. Don't worry. Problems with definitions. Let me take Jill now, Lady Jill. If you are there, or I don't know if the Jill is the sister Jill. I think so. Then please unmute and kindly read for me on the last lap there. Then we can close. Unless Jill is no longer there, then I would take Harriet. I've seen Joseph and in tears. I'll take you. Mudira read earlier and prayed. So let's take Harriet. Harriet, can you read for us? Let's do this quickly, please. Okay. Um, Good, problems with definitions. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, please. It's fine. Problems with definition. Flaws. Errors in definitions include being broad, narrow, circular, or um, bad. bad. The word is big. Okay, big. Yeah, yeah. Big. No worries. Okay, big. Thank Go you. Yeah. Note, okay. one definition may be flawed in more than one way. Broad. The Definitely covers things that do not belong in the donation denotation of the word. Good. Narrow. The definition does not cover all the things that correctly belong to the denotation of the word. Mm -hmm. Circular. Begging the question of tautology. Well, the definition. Right. <laughs> okay. Okay. The definition repeats the repeat definition. Mm. And the last mm. one, um, Madam, please, the big. word again. Big. Big, yeah. 
The definition does not specify adequately to determine what belongs to the words den denotation. Well done. So the words there were definitions. Okay, add ah, okay, it to what you okay. do already. No problem. To everyone, yeah. the opinions and then the opinion do good. This one is where we will end. So let me finish quickly in the way that is accessible to you. Your lady read and says, when we have a definition, it may have a challenge, a problem, a sickness, or yare. Broad, narrow, circular, and vague are not things to be proud of. They are weaknesses with how the person has defined the word. Either you yourself or you had someone. So a critical mind is able to do a self-assessment of what he or she has said or is able to assess what someone else is saying. So when I define a word, I give definition, I could be secular in the way I define the word. That means I only repeated the unknown word in the definition. I only repeated the definition in the definition. The person doesn't know the definition. Help me know it. Then you repeated that very word that I don't know. In what? The definition. When you do that, we criticize you for being what? Tautologos. Secular. Secular. Begging the question. Okay. Begging the question. Tautology. Example. So look on my screen. I, don't, I won't say much. Just look on my screen. Now. The trial activity questions. I want the chorus answer. Give me one word. <coughs> Show me one, one of the. Madam, can you hear me? Read any of the examples on my screen there. That is. You can criticize as being secular, secular, or begging the question, tautology. Yeah. Which one? I'm waiting. I'll mute and answer. Efficiency Development. The first one. Yeah, very good. This is a very good class. The sister started with the first one. Lady. Efficiency is being efficient at what you do in this office, please. That's secular. Then the, the brother also said development is to develop the nation. And you're both right. So those two are secular. You don't understand efficiency. And the person is saying, oh, efficiency is being efficient at what you do in this office. That's a clear. Recently, I listened to uh, the, a certain news item. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to replace so, Oh, you know, the thing, the thing is an outbreak because, you know, it is, it has broken out everywhere. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it, is, it is come on power after this. You listen out there. Let's yeah. <laughs> listen and we we'll laugh at you. I beg you. Let's listen and say, oh, this one would have been better. Yeah. And we're now testing power. Catch it one day. This year for a year. Development is to develop the nation. This this voting thing they went to do. You listen. We want to make sure that we develop the nation. Okay, so what is this thing? In Punta Juma and Namibia. What do you mean when you say the point to you? Because that is what you want to do. Oh, you put the human so to mine and pull. Oh, where is a mine to pull? That is what they do. Ah, uncle who? Uncle who? The person to do the accident thing. I'd rather ask you. Okay, so development is to develop the uncle who. If you go for international, whatever, United Nations, then go and say this. You come back, you go anyway. The same with efficiency is critical thinking is where you are critical in your thinking. What did I say? Nothing. It's secular. It begs the question. You didn't put content to the unknown word. Well done. Then, apart from secularity, we said broadness. We can criticize the meanings given as we're being broad. When I say a goat is a four legged animal, this is also factual, it can be a factual statement, okay. But suppose I gave it to you as a definition, I'm defining goat to you. And I said, oh, you don't know goat. A goat is a four-legged animal. What have I done? Is it broad, circular, narrow, or vague? I want a chorus answer. Broad. It's broad. It's broad. 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 Excellent. Broad. I'm just telling you if you don't know goat. Yes. I'm saying if you don't know goat, look at a four-legged animal. Broad. 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 Now, it means when you see cat, you will call it good. 
Oops. If you see Satan, you call him. I hope you see him. Because I'm telling you, you don't know God. Look at a four-legged animal. Broad, well done. What about if I said, so on our screen, which one is it? Broad, broad one. Very good. Very good. Very good. <laughs> you see, that's how you learn. <laughs> this is from your this understanding has... of the and, and the feminine. If you don't understand that, you get confused. You can't tell whether it's broad or narrow. Sometimes there are overlaps. So one, one definition can be broad, it can also be narrow. If you think of it in another connotation of that word. That is why we learned all that. Okay, so you know broad, you know secular. You can identify one, you can create one, you can call out one, you can prevent yourself from using one. Or where it matters, you can use it to outsmart your colleague, uh, lawyer who doesn't know, and they become better at what you are. Very good. Now the third one. The meaning of evil is murder. I'm saying if you don't know evil, it is narrow. Look at murder. Do you see what I've done? That's no. narrow. I hope you can see why. Because we have left out gossip. It's so evil. We have left out false witness. You are not there. He said that I was dead. Yeah, I saw it. You were not there. A, a false, bearing false witness. All those examples you can call out. That we know to be evil, yet not captured in the definition. The thing about definition is, the presupposition is we already know the thing. It's just we are, we are finding it difficult to communicate it. Language is struggling to capture what is already known as a rational beings. We are rational. Okay? So it's as if we don't know how to capture it. So the definition is actually what I don't know. Not that I can't conceptualize, but I don't know it. So you are using what you and I as human beings have imprinted in our mind as well as to capture it and so a dying or is it a me the meaning of evil we don't do evil we're struggling to find it capture it for us and then you say oh if you don't know evil look at murder what about stealing you alone you put four zeros so if you are not know you the people listening to me <laughs> and you put those resources and go then we can't hear you we can't uh, uh, Give food to people, they can run the nation, all that. It's so evil, uh, but it's not captured. So, this is narrow, it narrows it down. So, you know, secular, you know, broad, you know, narrow. Which one is vague? Vague is when you are not clear at all, you are indeterminate, you don't specify. From the way you are speaking, the definition doesn't show as the reference point. Look at broad. Broad told us what I said a dog. It's a four-legged animal, or a goat is a four-legged animal. We say it's broad, but it was specific. That's how we're able to tell that it's broad. Eh? It's specified. It, it was exact. Excuse me. It was determinate. I said it is a four-legged animal. So you go into the set of animals. Fruits won't come. Bottles will not be there. Human beings won't come. Unless you think of human beings as animals. When you go into the set of animals, then you look for those that have four legs. That's what the definition said. You see that? So it's, it was precise. It was exact. The only thing is that the exactness led you to other members that should have been there. That's why you said it. Hey, it led you to other members that shouldn't have been there brought. So you, you are able to tell that it was brought first because it was what specific. It was precise. A vague definition, it is not precise in book. So you don't know where to start searching for the reference. <laughs> democracy is freedom for all. When I define democracy like that, that's vague. Democracy is freedom for all. All what? All human beings, all creation, all living things, animals included, terrorists, prisoners, all what? And then the freedom nankasa there, I've used time to explain it to you already. Freedom nankasa, basa. What is freedom? What connotation of freedom do you mean? Everybody should be allowed to do what they like. Everybody, as in animals too. University of Ghana is how everyone can feel free to go there so that we say it's a democratic institution. You can do what you like at what time, in what places. Rapists should feel free and rape. Freedom for all. What's freedom? 
ability to do or access or availability or what? That's what I'm telling you. For all what? So this is vague. What makes it vague? This is not broad. It's vague. You are not even sure of what the determinant reference is for you to tell whether more have been added or some have been excluded. That is a vague definition. And you have example. When you use language figuratively, figure of speech, religion is the opium of the masses. That is vague. Opium is something you take in to sedate you, to get drunk or get drowsy and forget your problems. When you wake up, the problem will still be there. Religion, you can't take it in and swallow water on it. You can't sniff it. So the person speaking figure is open-ended. It says so many things. You don't even really know specifically what the reference point is. That's why I would say this is big. Okay, and on that note, we are done with unit two. Please, the slides are there. I take my time to engage content. I have no problem with that. But you are going to write an exam. So if you wait to hear types of definition from me, you slow down your progress. We don't want you to do that. And this course wants you to pass and pass in a certain way. At least a day. We want to, I want you to be ace. I'm speaking to all groups that come across the recording. Listen. Engage the content ahead of the class. That's why they are there to resource to all of them. Everything will engage is there. It is accessible to all groups. I put them there for all groups. If I get recordings and I do them, I'll share to the groups that I have. If colleagues do, didn't do what I do, you can share on your platforms. When I say it, it can go through the platforms for everyone. I just want you to have that posture. So you engage the content, at least the slides, read the text references. If you need to, the recordings on it, I'll go to my academic channel or YouTube and go through those that are there labeled, clearly five Dr. Dance in my house, JP or something. Just engage, you don't come and sit in the class for the first time and hear it from me. When we give you the exam, it will not respect how much was covered by which lecture at what time. It is like why? The exam that didn't care whether your school covered the syllabus. Or. So I want you to have that push. So we need to one, go through the slides. They are very interactive and covers a lot, a bit detailed, so that you don't have to struggle. Lecture two is what I went through with you. You have a, uh, I think I shared Dr. Morgan's on the lecture one. I shared mine for the whole site. Lecture three will be Dr. Casey's slides also. I shared it for everyone so that I have a taste of all. I'll teach it with you. You have to engage. When we make mess with you, know verbal disputes, substantive disagreement. I just have to come and put content to it, make it come alive for you. Okay, you know uh, uh, what's the other one? By week five, you know the, the senses of the word law. Yeah, the way you do that, you you always be ahead. Then the class discussions will be meaningful and more interactive. Thank you very much. I wish you all well. I pray that you have a wonderful week ahead. If you still have a question, I'm glad to take them. After I, I want to uh, halt the recording now so that the questions are tailor made for you. Because this recording can go to other groups as well. The wonderful, wonderful for the best. All right, so let's take your questions as I stop the recording. I see Daniel's hand, and then afterwards, yes, there's uh, Edward Asimini. Daniel, this is actually a question.